Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an FPS game in Unity and welcome to episode 13. In this tutorial we're going to add some sound effects for our door when it opens and we're also going to add in some ammo and the ability to collect that ammo or pick it up off the floor. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we've created these doors and this button which opens them but the problem is they're quiet, they don't make any sound. So I think we need to fix that first. So I'm going to bring in two sound effects uh, and then bring in uh, an object for the ammo. So let's start by going to audio and then the sound effects folder. And let's bring in these two samples. And you can get these on the website, head over there, downloads and assets, FPS series tutorial 13, and you can download them along with the ammo box that we're going to bring in later in this tutorial. So much like we did with the weapon, we need it to only trigger when we do a certain action, in this case, press the button. So we're going to have this door opening. So let's go to our first person controller, first person character, and go to our audio section, sound effects. And let's duplicate that pistol shot and let's rename it to metal doors and let's drag and drop this door opening over here. I'm going to leave all the settings as they are and see how it sounds. So firstly let's head into the script that opens this door up. So let's go to scripts, let's go to environment and open metal doors. Now we're going to need to add an extra variable so let's go here and let's say public audio source and we'll call it metal open semicolon and that does mean that when we get down here in the script where we've said if get button down is action and we do all this then we also need to play that sound so just before we turn off the collider let's say metal open dot play Oh, close bracket, semicolon, resave, and let's head back into Unity. Let it compile, and let's click on the switch for door, and we just need to add that extra variable for the metal doors down there, and let's press play and see how this sounds. Cool. Now obviously that's not a perfect sound. Uh, the whole idea of this is meant to simulate that that's how the sound works on this. Let's go through that again. You can obviously use your own sound if you want to. You can either create your own or you can source one off the internet. Free sound is usually a good place. There we go. So there is sound effects for the doors opening. So I would like to put just here some ammunition. So let's get to that now. So I'm going to turn off the post-processing on the scene view, go to the other side of our door, and I'm going to place a cube just here, which is going to represent that ammo box just for now. But that cube will also be useful um, for our script a little later on. So let's go to game object. Let's go to 3D object cube, and let's bring it up to ground level. Place it there, I guess. And we'll just call this ammo. Now, we need to place uh, an actual ammo box there. So we need an asset for this. So let's close up everything here so we can see. And we don't really have a folder that we can place um, this object in. So let's create a new folder. So right click, uh, create, and let's go folder. And we'll call this just objects. You can call it anything you want, really. It's just a place to store most objects in this sense. So I'm going to drag and drop this ammo box asset into here. And again, you can get this in the same um, file as those two sound effects. Uh, let's go into ammo box and let's drag and drop into the scene. I believe this is quite a large asset, as we can see. Very large. So we need to scale this down quite a lot. So let's have it as... 0.05, which might still be too big. 0.05, 0.05. Let's see how that looks. Still quite large. 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Too small. 
Um, but yeah, basically it's just finding the right size more than anything. That looks like it might do. So next, let's place that inside the cube we created, which was called ammo. In you go. There we go. And I'm just going to center the position there. Uh, let's bring it down to about there. And I'm going to turn off the mesh collider for our ammo cube. So make sure you do turn off mesh renderer there, not collider, <laughs> mesh renderer, not the box collider because we need the box collider. So turn off mesh renderer, but also tick is trigger in the box collider. Now the reason we do that is because the script we're going to create is going to be a trigger. And that trigger will give us ammunition, or at least it will make a sound to sound like we're giving ammunition. And then we can update as we go further into all of this. So how do we make it so as this object is basically ammo? Well, we need to create a script. So let's go to scripts and let's go to weapons. And we have ammo display. Remember, we created that a while ago. I'm actually going to go into it just for now. Uh, remember that we created the UI for this and got that working um, and it's basically saying what the pistol count is. Well, what we need to do now is we need to be able to alter this value from our other script that we are collecting the ammo. So let's create the script to collect the ammo. Right click, create C sharp script. Um, pistol ammo collect and let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now, as I said earlier, this is going to be a trigger object, meaning when we walk into it, we're triggering it to collect ammunition. So to do that, let's get rid of void start, void update and the annotations. We don't need them. We do need to add in a variable, which is going to be uh, the sound effect of collecting the ammo. So public audio source ammo collect semicolon and the method we're going to use is void on trigger enter it doesn't need to be private so you can get rid of that and the way this is going to work is when we collide with this ammunition object we are going to make it disappear we're going to play a sound and we're also going to update our ammunition value. So it's three lines of code. So firstly, we need to say this dot set. Actually, it should be this dot game object dot set active and false. Now, the reason we have put this here is because I want to illustrate or discuss a fact of ordering when it comes to coding. So the other two lines of code are going to be ammo collect dot play, much like we did before with the metal doors opening, we play the sound effect. And the other one is going to be updating the value for our ammo display. So ammo display is pistol count. So we need to change pistol count to be static. So other scripts can interact with it, much like we've done with our player casting. So make sure we change pistol count in the ammo display to static and save. Thanks, Avas. And let's go to pistol ammo collect. And then let's say ammo display dot. And then if you scroll down the list, you'll find pistol count. Then we'll say plus equals one semicolon and save. Now, as it stands, this script, thank you Avast, thank you very much, you don't need to keep popping up on me, I'm trying to do my job here. So as it stands, this script will not work. The reason it won't work is because the ordering of the code. So the order you create code is sometimes very, very important. So it's going to run each line one after the other. And if the object becomes inactive, there's a good chance that other things may not occur. So for example, if the ammo collect sound effect was on that ammo object, it wouldn't play. So you always have to be mindful of things in the script. Try and do it in the order you want things to occur. So 
you know, sometimes it, it doesn't really matter the order of some of these lines of code, but it's always good to try and be as accurate as possible when creating those particular lines. So we are saying, as soon as we enter this, we want to collect uh, play sound. We want to change our pistol count and then turn the object off so we can't keep triggering that object over and over. Now, things may occur here. They may go a little bit wild, but there's always things we can do to help that. So let's save that script. Let's head back into Unity. And now we need to add the sound effect. So metal doors up here. Let's duplicate that and rename it to ammo collect. And then the audio sound effect that we brought in earlier, which is ammo pickup, just drag and drop that over there. And now head to that ammo collection box and let's attach the script to that. So scripts, weapons, and pistol, uh, is it pistol? Yes, that one, isn't it? Pistol ammo collect. And we just need to put in that collect sound. So if we save our scene now, and press play. We should be able to head over here, open our door, and collect our ammunition. And there we go. You notice at the bottom as well, ammo has updated to one. And obviously, because we placed that right there, we could say that would be 10. So, let's try that one more time, in fact, let me bring a light in here so we can see the ammo a little bit better. Maybe even play around with its uh, material a little bit. Uh, but let's take this point light, duplicate it, and let's quickly bring it here. Yeah, that should do. And then let's press play. And hopefully when we collect the ammo this time, it will change to 10. There we go. So we played the sound effect. We collected it once. We now have 10 in our ammo. And you can always play around with the material if you want to. Um, you know, I always recommend playing around materials. If you do want to do that, um, what you'd need to do is click, uh, sorry, right click, and you would need to unpack. Now, you may have seen it in various different tutorials. Um, basically, what this comes down to is the fact the material is basically inside some of these prefabs. So if you unpack that prefab and you take this material, hold control and press D, you can actually then play around with the material. So as, as always, you can create a normal map. So this is the texture. Let's duplicate that. Let's turn it into a normal map. Uh, click apply, click the material, you know, drag it on there. Uh, change it, do what you need to. Uh, I, I always love customizing um, assets. I really feel that it helps so much. We can see that that is now attached to uh, the ammo itself. You just need to attach different aspects of each um, particular section, like there, the lid, that's now changed. Uh, same with the others. Again, it all comes down to how you want to um, basically make it your own work rather than just taking assets and doing you know, <laughs> what they call asset flips. Even though it's, it's not an asset flip, that's why I like to modify assets. So while I do the same here with the... Uh, in fact, I may leave the bullets. That looks okay. So let's talk about what we're going to do in the next tutorial. I like the way the light displays, that's pretty good. Cool. So, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in some ambience. So, I'm thinking some kind of like wind sound just to give it a bit more atmosphere. And we're also going to look at bringing in a character. So, it could be um, an enemy. So, I'm thinking the thumbnail for this series has a guy sat on a crate. I think we're going to bring him in and he's going to be our first enemy. So we'll import an enemy and go from there. So until the next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.